Hello and welcome to Tony's Bonsai. In today's video, I'm going to be making two miniature bonsai from these two spruce trees and selecting from these six pots. I think this spruce is going to be ideal for a sort of informal upright, but this one here, I think could make a great cascade. So let's take a look at the roots and pick a pot. I suspect this pot's going to be too big for the kind of shito style that I'm going for. And for a cascade, obviously, these are going to be too shallow. So it's going to be a question of selecting one of these to go with this. And the, obviously they're both green, they both look good. But I really like this shade of green. I think it'll go really nicely with the spruce. Right, it could both work. Let's take a look first of all at the roots. I'll move these pots to the side flip this out, give it a squeeze, oh look, and the roots, flipping out. <laughs> What's going on there? There's almost no roots on it. Flipping heck. <laughs> Hmm, it's quite a nice tree. I'm surprised it's alive with so little root. And it would make a great cascading tree off the side of this. It's got quite a nice sort of spread of roots. There's just nothing on the end of them really. I can either go in that or it could go in there. Which do you prefer? You know, there's part of me. It's part of me likes the contrast of the blue and the green as opposed to just matching like that. I just imagine that cascading down. Oh, I do. I like this. So I've changed my mind having looked at the tree and I'm going to go with this. Hopefully there's some more roots on that other tree. Hmm. This one might not, might not make it. <laughs> but you never know. Let's go for it nonetheless. I'll just wrap some aluminium wire all the way around, nice and easy, working my way up to the top, just avoiding all the buds. There. And then let's bring the pot back. It's got a kind of natural curve this way. So I do want to put some movement in this very bottom part of the tree. So I'm going to go for that and just try to bend that bottom bit there. Take this down like that. then up like that. What do you think to that? I think that's quite nice. Especially if I could get a bit of more bend lower down. Get that coming up. I don't want to go too mad with it because obviously it looks like it's dying. <laughs> but let's get that plant planted up. I've got some mesh in the bottom. I'll just add some bonsai soil, place the tree down on the in, inside there like that, in fact I'll just bring that wire around a bit and hopefully with a bit of water and a bit of food this will survive, I mean I don't need to bother too much about Chopstick in uh, the soil in around the roots, the, there almost were none. Yeah. And I'll give that a water. So, what do you think? Do you think I made the right decision or would you have gone with that green? Let me know in the comments. 
We'll do a bit of a swirl around. I've just had a look in the soil and I found one vine weevil. So I'm definitely going to have to get some nematodes and spray all of my trees because all these ones that come from garden centres around me, they all seem to have vine weevil. And a couple of massive worms as well. <laughs> it's becoming quite interesting, this vine weevil problem that I've got. I've never found one in a plant that I've potted with my own bonsai soil. Every single one has been a plant that's come from a nursery garden centre. These spruce were given to me by a chap at a local garden centre. He just sold them as seeds and gave them me. Very kind of him. And I'm wondering now if all of these type of trees might have that same vine weevil infestation. So I'm going to remove all the soil from these three. And as I say, I'm going to have to treat my whole garden definitely for vine weevil. But perhaps a couple of these might look good in these little pots anyway. So, you know, maybe it's, uh, maybe it's a good thing. We'll put these two bigger ones to the side for now and take a look at this one. And just initially, this seems to have a much better root system. Yeah, this has got actual roots coming down. Not super healthy, but they've been sitting in this fairly wet peat. So at least there are some roots there. Fit it in there. Yeah, definitely. I think that could work well in this pot. If I'm going to do it, I may as well do it properly. Cut them right back as you're supposed to. like that and start developing a proper root base that'll fit in a tiny pot like that. Tiny bit of bonsai soil in with the tree and then <laughs> it's high. there's nothing sort of supporting it because I'm used to having sort of soil, enough soil around the edge to hold them firm. Okay, I've applied wire this is obviously the first branch, so I'd rather bend away from that. Let's go over there. We've got quite a weird twisting branch here. That I've added, I've added wire to. I quite like that one. I'll leave that like that. And then this one here, I'll take back around like that. I think I've got something there. I just maybe like a little more bend in the trunk, if possible. Like that. And then move that across like that. It's really hard working with these such tiny little trees. But I think that's got something going on. And even this branch here, I've had, I've wired it so I can. Give it a bit of movement, just a bit of something. <laughs> they make me laugh, these little things. As opposed to those, uh, well, I don't know, are they pronounced shitos or shitos? But uh, as opposed to one of those, this is much bigger. This is a mame. I can tell straight away that it's got a much better root system. Just the way it came out of the pot. I've no worries about there being any bugs in this. You can just tell. And you can see it's a lot thicker. I got all these at the same time. Which is kind of hard to believe, but it's true. And they were all kind of similar-ish. This was obviously the more healthy and vigorous one. And this is 
put down loads of roots, obviously, which is why it's got a far, far thicker trunk. And it's been much, much better. In fact, thinking about it, it, I don't even know if that's right, what I'm saying there. I don't know if this one, I can't have got this with those. No, I didn't. I got this other one, which is the more vigorous of those ones. This is just a tiny spruce that I collected. I think it was just a tiny seedling that I pulled up somewhere when I was out walking. It was just at the edge of a path, just a tiny little thing and I put it in a pot and it's grown really well, as you can see. I'm not precious about this. And also the other thing, this is in my bonsai soil. This isn't in that um, peat from the garden center. It just shows you the value of putting them in, you know, a decent soil that's well, that, you know, that's got good drainage. You know, it's not been sitting in soggy, wet soil with the roots rotting and vine weevils munching on it. So this has actually got a nabari of sorts. In fact, it's a pretty good one, really. So I won't be cutting this, putting this into one of those tiny pots. This is definitely going to go in, going to go into this one. Because almost all my bonsai trees are trees in development, I'm used to working with big pots. And my instinct says this would be great in something like that. It give the roots lots of chance to grow and develop. But that's not what I want to do. I've got loads of spruce trees and I'm definitely going to try and get it into that. In terms of getting this in there, a lot of root has to come off. This is so alien to me. Look at all that root I need to remove. I really like these spreading roots on the surface. So... The only thing is, if I have these roots kind of displayed a little bit even there, it's pushing the tree over to this side of the pot. If I have the tree in the centre, I'm cutting nearly all the roots off. Maybe I could tilt it up. Yeah, I'm going to tilt it like that and have it kind of central, central-ish. And then all I'll do is give it a haircut around the edge of the pot. Like that. And hopefully now, this just sits down nicely inside the pot like that. And it does. We've got a bit of a a root here on the surface that, oh yeah, I can push that down that side, that's okay. There. This one's potted up now. You won't be at all surprised to hear that this is my favourite so far. <laughs> and it was also the most enjoyable to work on. I think that's got some future, actually. I like that. Right, we've got the last one here. Again, this is grown in peat, but this one has got decent roots. It's got liverwort on the top. Oh, I wonder if the the roots are weeds. <laughs> it just shows you the moral of the story is you've got to get them home and get them out of this peat. You've got to get them into bonsai soil. They just don't do any good in this. They just sit there and the roots rot. Nothing grows. I don't think there's a, again, there's no vine weevils in this one. It's just the roots are not healthy because they've been in just damp peat from the nursery. Okay, it's my last tree. It's got fairly decent roots, although I did find one vine weevil in the soil. So it's definitely been something chomping away. 
I've got choices. I can either get these roots into here. I really like this cream part. I think it looks lovely. Or I could put it in the cascade, get some wire on this and grow a cascade. I really like the idea of a, ca a small cascading spruce and because I think that other one is not going to make it, this could be perfect to do that. So I'm going to go with a cascade. And now for the fun bit. I've applied the wire. It's so much easier to apply wire before the tree's in the pot. It doesn't take long at all and you can do just do a much better job. So I'm going to cut these roots down in a moment. But for the time being, they can go in the pot like this this is the nice section of roots here so they're the bits that i want sort of you know not exposed but on the top there to provide a a nabari and then it naturally goes this way so that's the way it's going to go so now i've worked that out i don't need the pot there i can just try and get some movement in this lower section, if I can. I've applied a fairly thick piece of wire. You need to for a spruce like this. Round she goes there. There. Oh, so that's good, I like that. That works great. We've got these two branches here and I'm wondering if they'll be better at the back so that I can see the main line of the tree because that's what I would prefer. I want to see that main line and at this point here I'll try to take it down like that. There, that's good. So we're now seeing this main flow. These ones up here can just have some interest added like that. Let me have a look at that now. Now, and I'd like this here to sort of then maybe come up like that. And then this back branch can even come down and across, something like that. So that's the basic movement done. I'll get this in the pot next. So I'll look at these roots. Get them to so I'll take the pot it's going approximately there so we'll take that bottom section off there that's about right with this tree I'm only putting a tiny amount of soil in to start off Just the tiniest amount. And then the roots can go in. Push them down nicely like that. And then I slowly work this soil in. Just pour it in and just get it down there into the roots. Without necessarily meaning to, I think I've saved the best till last here. I just really like the way this has come out as a cascade. And I was right about making this the front here. So we can see this really nice line of the trunk sort of cascading down the side of the pot. And the, these other back branches give it some really nice depth. I don't think that's a bad final display, actually, considering I've not done this before. It's three Shito, one Mame Bonsai. Yeah. Very satisfying. I definitely wouldn't say I'm a convert, but I did enjoy this, putting these together, and I'm going to enjoy looking after these and hopefully getting all of them through the spring and the summer alive. And obviously, I'll update you on how these get on in the coming months. As always, thanks for joining me. Have a great day and I'll see you soon.